Hey everybody, welcome to my Pete and Pole Air Camper slash RV7 YouTube video channel. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. If you've been here before and you've looked at some of the other videos, you've probably noticed the long, boring uh, introduction at the beginning of each one. I am redoing that now. I just want to cut it down, keep it nice and short and sweet and to the point. So again, welcome. Uh, one thing I also wanted to make note of is I'm going to include uh, some contact information for those who have questions and uh, would potentially like some help with their project. Um, haters, don't waste your time. I am Johnny on the spot with the delete button and I will delete your email post haste and not even read it. So don't waste my time. Don't waste yours. Uh, anybody else looking for some help, advice, have questions, concerns, whatever, you'll now be able to contact me directly. Um, I'm quite regular on email, um, so I should be able to get a response to you relatively quick. I've got a ton of photographs for both aircraft, so if, if you need some clarification on something, chances are I've got detailed photographs and I'll be able to help you out. Let's see, other than that, uh, I think that's it. I'm going to keep this short. Um, oh. Again, if, uh, if, if you like what you see and uh, you want to help me out uh, to get through my RV7 build project, uh, you can visit my GoFundMe. Just do a search for Caretaker Arrow. That's Caretaker with a K. I also have a, um, an Amazon wish list. There's some pieces, parts in there that I could use. Again, if you feel moved enough to help me out, it'd be greatly appreciated. Or if you want to just contact me directly, um, you know, we can, we can talk about whatever, and um, so I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it, and uh, again, hopefully you'll find these videos worth your time, and um, that's that. So let's get back to building, and I am now going to shut up, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Here are the stiffeners with the fuel tank sealant and obviously their cleat code. Now this is the way that I prefer to do my fuel tank sealant. This is the way that I had done my other fuel tank and from the uh, limited leak testing that I have done, it was leak free. So what I like to do is um, what you see here, basically put the sealant on the stiffener put the stiffener in place, Clico it down, and what I'm getting ready to do now, I'm gonna come back and clean up all the excess and make that nice little fillet that everybody talks about when it comes to sealing fuel tanks. So I'll just come through here with uh, a rag and some, I'm gonna use uh, the acetone, and I'll just wipe all this excess off and wipe it around and uh, make a nice fillet around uh, each and every one of these stiffeners. Wow, I can't think today. And that's going to be it. Once I get these wiped up and cleaned and get the fillet um, around all of them individually, then I'm done. I'm going to let this sit at least until tomorrow. May let it sit longer than that. But um, I am not going to do any riveting or anything like that at all. I'm just going to get these cleaned up and let them sit for at least a day. Clico to as you see here. So let me get those cleaned up and then uh, I'll come back and talk with you a little bit more. Here are the fuel tank stiffeners Clicoed and cleaned and fillet, filleted. Is that a word? I don't know. But they've got the fillets are in and they've been cleaned and now they are just going to sit and dry overnight. I don't plan on doing anything else with them until they've sat for about 24 hours or so. Maybe not quite that much, maybe a little bit longer, not sure. Um, but that's just how I like to do it. I like to um, do it in short segments, the, uh, the fuel tank sealant. I don't like fooling around with it for hours and days and weeks at a time um, with it wet and getting on everything and in everything. So I just uh, put the stiffeners in with, uh, with some fuel tank sealant, 
Clico them down. I actually let it, let it sit that way for a couple of hours while I ate. And then I came back out with a rag and some acetone and then uh, smeared the fuel tank sealant around to create the little fillets and uh, cleaned off all the excess. You really don't need a ton of fuel tank sealant gooped and smeared and blobbed everywhere. It just adds unnecessary weight to the airplane. Um, so keep your fillets nice and clean and your, uh, your stiffeners cleaned. And uh, matter of fact, anything that you do with the fuel tank, as I work my way through it, I'll show you how I do I do the ribs and everything the same way. So I just keep everything nice and crisp. I don't have blobs and, and unnecessary fuel tank sealant everywhere. So within another day or two I'll come back out here and I'll wet set the rivets into all of these and then I'll back rivet those and um, as soon as I get those back riveted wet I'll come back just like I did with these and I'll wipe everything down and clean off all the excess and uh, at some point after that I will encapsulate the shop head of those rivets. But for now, this is how far I've gotten. This is complete. I'm just going to let it sit until it's time for the back riveting. I'm setting up now to do my back riveting and probably the most solid stable surface that I have in my entire shop is my concrete floor. So I do all my back riveting right on the floor. I've got a collapsed cardboard box over here, which is pretty thick. And then I've got a piece of plywood over here. These are just the uh, things that I use to lay my aluminum onto when I get ready to back rivet. In between them, I use this as my backing plate. This is a, a large, very heavy, half inch thick piece of stainless steel. On the back side of it, I just padded it a little bit with some duct tape so that it doesn't scratch my floor too bad. And then on the front side, I just put some blue painter's tape uh, to keep it from marring the skins. So I just set this up on the floor. And, uh, you know, of course I can position these wherever I need them. Uh, lay my skin across and uh, back rivet onto the plate, uh, over the plate here. So I'm just getting my stuff set up now to do the stiffeners, as you can see here. These have sat overnight. I'm not sure that the uh, fuel tank sealant is set up enough to my liking. It, to me, it still seems a little soft. It hasn't been a complete 24 hours. Um, but I'm going to pull some of these Clicos off. I'm going to back rivet um, a stiffener or two just to see how they come out. And if it looks good, I'll go ahead and do them all. But if the uh, if the sealant is still a little too soft, if I'm getting a little too much um, squish, then I'll probably wait and let it cure for another day or so. But I'm going to try that next and see what gives. I don't know how well this is going to come out, but I'm going to try to demonstrate how I am going to, going to do the back riveting on my uh, fuel tank stiffeners. So the stiffeners have been put on, as you already know from the other videos, and they've been um, fuel tank sealant has been applied between them and the skin, and they've been cleaned. Now, one at a time, I'm going to pull the Clecos out. So I'm working on this stiffener right here. So I'm going to pull these Clecos out. And I'm only going to pull the Clecos out of the stiffener that I'm putting the rivets in. I'm not going to pull all the Clecos out of all of the stiffeners because, as you can see, the skin moves around a lot. And I'm afraid if I remove all of the Clecos from all the stiffeners and this skin moves around, enough it may flex enough that it would pop that stiffener loose or at least open up a gap from the flexing so I'm only going to remove these rivet or these Clecos until I get these rivets set 
or at least until I get them installed. So I've pulled the uh, Clecos out. Now I'm going to put my rivets in. However, I am not going to add any additional sealant. There's already sealant in here and it's still relatively soft. So now I'm just going to go ahead and populate these with the stiffeners or wow, populate these with the rivets. Try not to bump the camera. Hopefully this skin is not moving around too much and it's still in the frame. The reason I am not adding any additional sealant to these rivets, I had done a test piece over here. I don't know if that's in camera or not. Let me see. Yes, just a little bit. This is a short uh, stiffener. It only had four rivets in it. And I had added more sealant to the rivet and I put the rivet in and taped it and back riveted it and uh, they're a little proud. And I think it's just because of all the sealant that was jammed in underneath the head just didn't let it sit down far enough. So I am not adding additional sealant to these. So now that they're in, try not to block the camera, I'm going to use an owl to just press these in. I'm holding the stiffener on the back side with my other hand and I'm just going to seat these all the way into the dimple. Trying to keep the flexing of the skin to a minimum. Make sure those are all recessed. They're nice and seated. Okay, now I like to use Kapton tape. This is actually a little thin. This is half inch wide. I have some one inch wide, but I just wanted to use this roll up first. So I'm using this thin Kapton tape and I'll position it right over top of these heads. I'm not pulling it tight. I'm just keeping it smooth. I'll go right over top of the rivets. And then I'll come back. Again, I support the stiffener with my hand on the back side. And I'll just go ahead and again drive these into the dimple. Just like that. And I'll do that for each stiffener. So now I'll come down here and I'll remove these Clecos, put the rivets in, seat them, tape them, and move on. Hello again everybody and as usual thanks for coming by. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it worthy and uh, again as always hopefully you found something that was uh, worth your time. So thanks again for stopping by and again making this short and sweet. Um, I've got contact information available now so if you feel the need to uh, help me out with my RV7 project uh, feel free to email me or you can go to my GoFundMe, as I said in the beginning, at uh, just do a search for Caretaker Arrow. That's Caretaker with a K. And again, I've got the uh, Amazon uh, wish list. And uh, for you RV7 guys and girls out there, if, uh, if you watch these videos and are moved to uh, purchase an RV kit of your own, if you'd include my build number with your first order, Vans will uh, give me a hundred bucks. Um, it's kind of like a referral, I guess. So uh, if you were to do that, I would greatly appreciate it. It's no money out of, out of your pocket. It's just something Vans does as an incentive. So as I said, if you decide to build and you order your first kit, if you'd include my builder number, I'd appreciate it. And all this contact information will be in the description of each video. So check out the description and uh, do what you feel you need to do and uh, I would appreciate any help and again if you need some further assistance contact me I've got photographs I've got videos we can communicate directly and uh, hopefully I can give you some further guidance if you want it so that's it again thanks for stopping by come back uh, frequently I try to do a video or two um, every week if I can 
So uh, subscribe, keep coming back, and uh, I will talk to you again soon. All right, thanks.